This comes from an article published on astronomy.com. Snapshot. Curiosity sees glowing clouds on Mars. NASA's Curiosity rover has captured images of shimmering, high-flying clouds that researchers hope can teach us more about the red planet and its atmosphere. Clouds on Mars are relatively rare, thanks to the planet's thin, dry atmosphere, but they do appear near the equator when Mars is near aphelion, its farthest point from the sun, which is when Mars experiences the coldest part of its year. The red planet is approaching that point now and will officially reach it late on in the evening of July 12th. So I have a question for those listening. How many of you have ever thought about clouds on Mars? How many of you ever heard of clouds on Mars? Well, Mark Lemon, senior research scientist of the Space Science Institute, actually addresses this in an interview with planetary radio host Matt Kaplan in a recent episode titled The Pearly Clouds of Mars. Yeah, clouds on Mars and our observations of them go way back. We were observing them from Earth before we ever sent anything to Mars. So it's not a surprise that there are clouds. We get to Mars with some of the things to be able to characterize them, starting with the orbiters, the first landers, and now the rovers. We're able to see the clouds in different ways. We've known, again, for some time that there are a couple of kinds of clouds. There are water ice clouds, depending on where you are on Mars. Those water ice clouds can form as low as the surface. There are fog in some places, and there are high altitude clouds, 15 kilometers, 10 miles in other places. So let's talk about some of the things you may not know about Mars. But they always knew. So at this point, it is apparent that Mars has a pretty substantial atmosphere. We've learned that it has ice caps, then water. Then they showed us that propellers could use lift to carry a small drone. Now they're telling us there are clouds of all different types. Now you could say that this was known about 40, 50 years ago. You could even say that it was known about in ancient times. But you have to admit, most of us never heard about any of this until recent times. Maybe the last decade or so has ice caps on Mars become somewhat common knowledge. Anyway, the conversation between Mark Lemon and Matt Kaplan is quite funny. Because it is quite telling and it's funny because Mark acts like this information is well known. And you shouldn't be surprised by any of these atmospheric discoveries. And it is, in a way, true. They have images of clouds on Mars going back to 2006 and further. But listen to this. Matt says, I was shocked to read that some of these carbon dioxide clouds are more than 60 kilometers up, or about 200,000 feet. More than 200,000 feet. I'm surprised to learn that there's enough atmosphere at that height, especially above Mars, that you could have clouds. Was this a surprise to any of you? Then Mark says, It's a surprise in a bigger picture sense. We knew it before we took these pictures, but it's certainly stunning to think about an atmosphere that's already 1% of what we have on Earth at the surface. Then you go 70 kilometers above that and we're seeing clouds. Now, does that make sense to you guys? Anyone know what a noctilucent cloud is they are night shining clouds the highest clouds in earth's atmosphere up up in the mesosphere some 50 to 85 kilometers above the surface so what mark is saying here is that there are clouds on mars as high as 70 kilometers 
on the highest clouds on Earth, the average is very close. Not only that, cirrus clouds, the ones that form iridescent clouds, the rainbow-colored ones, those clouds are up about 20,000 feet. Are they saying Mars has iridescent clouds at 200,000 feet? Wait a minute. How big is the atmosphere on Mars? That seems pretty high to have such a thin atmosphere. The PSI, or air pressure, here on Earth at the surface is on average 14.7 pounds per square inch. The PSI on Mars at the surface is on average 0.09 PSI. That means the air pressure on the surface of Mars is as thin as the air pressure 100,000 feet above the surface of Earth. So how do you get a rotocraft to fly on the surface of Mars with the air that thin? The highest aircraft here can only fly up to 90,000 feet. Helicopters can only go up to around 40,000 feet. So again, how do you get an aircraft to fly around in air that thin? Oh, you make the propellers spin really fast. Oh, so you mean to tell me that NASA has a helicopter that theoretically can fly in, at an altitude of more than 100,000 feet? Because that's what it sounds like. Maybe I'm wrong, but that is what they are saying it takes for that helicopter to fly around Mars. It only has a radio range of a thousand meters, so it can't get very far. So what you end up doing is you end up testing this thing in a space simulator. Now we're talking between 2300 and 2800 RPM. Those blades are spinning 10 times faster than a helicopter. The thing sounds like a loud lawnmower. It's all very technical how they explain the mechanics. And they say that because Mars has 38% less gravity, it plays a significant role in the flying physics. Am I right? I mean, they're saying the air is that thin and the temperatures are that extreme. These machines can survive long-term radiation exposure and the radiation doesn't break down the circuitry or anything. Extreme temperature shifts. These machines are rolling around and flying around Mars like it's nothing. Well, not really flying. Folks, I never heard of a man-made machine that you could build it, get it running, and leave it alone for a decade on another planet, mind you, and the thing still runs. Even when they explain how they do all this, for some reason I still want to laugh because I have a hard time buying it. And it may just be my lack of education on the subject curiosity. Look at this piece of junk. It looks like it couldn't last 10 months on Mars, let alone 10 years. And they want us to believe that the technology is actually 100 times better than what it looks like. Honestly, folks, they have a hard time getting a rocket to launch without it blowing up. How is this even a thing? Autonomous vehicles on Mars. You know, flying a helicopter takes some skill. They, they're easy to crash. That propeller hits something spinning at 2,700 RPM, that whole craft would just rip to shreds on impact. And they have busted this thing up in test flights here on Earth. Oh, but not on Mars. Now, I'm not saying that what is going on with Mars is not real, but I do see the narrative changing. In an article titled, How to Fly a Helicopter on Mars, they go through and explain the physics and how they built the space chamber to simulate Mars' atmosphere. Here it reads, Red skies and beyond. JPL is in the process of designing the final Mars helicopter, which it will build and test over the next two years before launch in the summer of 2020. The Mars 2020 rover, with the helicopter strapped to its belly pan, will arrive at the red planet after a six-month flight through space. It will touch down using the same propulsive entry, descent, and landing EDL system as the Curiosity rover popularly known as the Sky Crane. After deploying the Mars helicopter, Mars 2020 will rove off to study the geography of Mars for years to come. But for the helicopter, the clock starts immediately. The team plans to fly the craft up to five times during the 30 sole Martian day testing window. 
achieving progressively longer flights that culminate in a 90-second cruise through the Martian skies to cover a distance of a few hundreds of meters. For the first flight, the little helicopter will hover at 3 meters up for 30 seconds, becoming the first heavier than aircraft to fly on another planet. If that doesn't sound impressive, keep in mind that the Wright brothers' first flight over the fields of Kitty Hawk lasted only 12 seconds. So right now this thing doesn't really fly, it kinda hops and doesn't stay in the air for very long. They want to send one of these helicopters to Saturn's moon Titan. Now they plan to take ingenuity up to 10 meters or 33 feet, 32.8 feet to be exact. Within the window of time they say they can fly this thing, but not remotely, the helicopter is autonomous. They are trying to test the feasibility of this idea, but it seems as though they are breaking or bending conveniently some of the laws of physics here. So something is not adding up. I mean, did they just send one of these things with the confidence that it wouldn't break or malfunction? You know, they have yet to reveal liquid water. I mean, they have already revealed it, but traces of it. Nothing like a stream or river, yet. But for some reason, I think it's coming. They'll say something like, oh, we found a puddle. Speaking of Mars, with all this talk about Elon and Bezos and Mars, it reminds me of an episode of a YouTube show called Spitting Image. The show has fantastic puppetry and it's pretty funny. In an episode called US Election Special, part one and two, we have Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and Richard Branson traveling to Mars where they get stuck. You gotta check it out. Good stuff. I mean, it's fiction, but it seems to be playing out as we speak. There is more to come, everyone. I don't know what their obsession is with Mars, but they seem to be spending an awful lot of money on it. Be sure to visit woodwardentertainment.com. There is a new video of me being interviewed by Firestar TV. You can check that out. The link will be in the description box below. Until next time, this is Jay Woodward reminding you all to stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.